بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. I didn't say to hate them. I'm just saying we don't need them here. Everybody knows who's trying to kill us, and it's like we can't say it. Post 9-11 world, we should be a little suspicious of any group trying to relocate to this community. They had the words not welcome there, and that's that's a very clear sign. Muhammad was a hate. He's a out of the state. Someone in the middle of the night doused these engines with gasoline. This is violent. We have filed a lawsuit to stop the building of the mosque. They can claim religion all they want. But it don't mean you're going to come in here and do this in Rutherford County. It's my right as an American citizen to have a place of worship. Murfreesboro is kind of a small, big town. It's a beautiful place where family can live and grow and be a part of a community, a very loving community. We love Murfreesboro, and we love it for the most part, the way it is and the way it has been. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what race you are, whatever, the people here are so welcoming. Talk to the residents of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they'll tell you the strength of their city lies its close-knit community and strong religious faith. The city has 104,000 people. More than 140 churches. And one mosque. For decades, Muslims have lived and prayed alongside their neighbors. But in June 2010, their place in the community was questioned, exposing a growing fear of Islam in America nearly 10 years after the attacks of 9-11. We as citizens, we have families and we have children in this community and we're trying to look out for our future. We thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you for your joy. We Kevin Fisher has lived in Murfreesboro for 20 years. God, if we get a little too high, just... He's a corrections officer and a single father. Last May, Kevin was stunned to discover local officials had approved plans for a 53,000 square foot Islamic center in his hometown. Neighbors were outraged that something of this nature was being basically shoved down our throats so we didn't know anything about it. A month later, the typically sleepy county commission meeting was anything but. So many people turned up for the public hearing, authorities wouldn't let them all in. I'm very happy to see this many people here that are really standing up. A few residents complained about the lack of notice of the mosque plan. I, I would respectfully ask for an expanded public hearing again. Virtually everyone else spoke out against the threat of Islam. Everybody knows who's trying to kill us, and it's like we can't say it. And I would encourage the boycott of any contractor associated with the project. Thank you. Our country was founded uh, through the founding fathers, uh, through the true God, the Father and Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, but they seem to be against everything that I believe in. And so I don't want them necessarily in my neighborhood. That concludes our public comment period. Thank you very much. Local officials refused to reconsider their unanimous approval of the plan. God bless America. We decided to hold a march so that the America, the whole world, everybody could see these people didn't get noticed. So that's what we did. Ignore their intolerance. We know why we're here. We call on our county commission to halt the process of this mosque. Under Sharia law, there is no freedom of speech. Among those marching against the mosque plan was prominent local resident and real estate developer Sally Wall. My fourth great-grandmother was the first woman buried in a marked grave in Rutherford County. That's how long we've been here. And I think that has quite a bit to do with how you feel about what happens here in the community. Also marching, Sally's husband, Howard Wall, a local power broker and former Republican County chairman. I always thought so that other people marched. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have to march, but, but who am I not to march? 
I want to show my interest in my community and my country. Here is this enormous building, which is going to be occupied by people who are of the same religion that the people are who we're fighting in Afghanistan, who we have been fighting in Iraq. Why are they building a mosque of nearly 53,000 square feet? That is a lot of square footage, and it's going to be a very expensive thing. Now, are 200 families, or 200 Muslims, however many they are, how are they going to pay for it? I know when we expanded our church, we're still paying for it. Other residents opposed to the mosque plan included Ronald Todd. For 93 years, Todd's family owned the land, sold at auction to the Muslims in Murfreesboro. Todd says his grandparents are turning over in their graves because the land is being used to build a mosque. They worship another god than what I'm accustomed to worship. I've heard some rumors about a different law they go by, but if I live in Tennessee, I live by Tennessee law and the law of the United States of America. My name's Lou Ann Zelnick, and we're a group of citizens. We've organized Several local politicians Patriots seized on the issue, like Lou Ann Zelnick, who ran for Congress in Tennessee. We are joining with so many who feel that they're concerned because it is not the Christians, it is not the Jews that flew airplanes into the buildings. A strange place for a huge mosque. And Even televangelist Pat Robertson weighed in on the proposed mosque. You mark my word, if they start bringing thousands and thousands of Muslims into that relatively rural area, the next thing you know, they're going to be taking over the city council. More suspicions were raised after opponents claimed a member of the mosque had posted this photo of the leaders of Hamas, a U.S.-labeled terrorist group, on his MySpace page. He was suspended from the mosque for two months. Post 9-11 world, we should be a little suspicious of any group trying to relocate to this community. Freedom! Freedom! But many in Murfreesboro supported the mosque plan. The protest march that June day drew hundreds of people of different faiths rallying in support of religious freedom. Hey, Organized this rally in order to show support for the First, First Amendment right of Murfreesboro residents to worship the way that they see fit. I think we all should be free to practice our religion. Among the mosque supporters, Lemma Spinati, an 18-year-old Muslim in Murfreesboro. You could just see their, like in their eyes, you could see that hate. I didn't say to hate them, I'm just saying we don't need them here. Do you hear that? Find that? There's some shot fired. Yes. Oh. The explosive fight over religion in Murfreesboro was just beginning. Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Police Department. The Muslims don't believe in it, honey. The Muslims... Do you know? They will not live and let live. I was in the military. I've been over there. Go to Afghanistan. The fact that I've lived here for so long and I've never seen this side of anyone before, sometimes I still wake up and I'm like, is this really happening? Read the Quran! All infidels must die! To have all of these people come out and openly say that we are against, you know, this religion was very shocking. This mosque that they're trying to build, all it is is a training center. I don't want anybody in there creating something that can be used to attack us. I know they're afraid for their country, but, you know, to label all the Muslims and the Muslim community in Murfreesboro in particular to be terrorists, this is nonsense. Salah Spinati has lived in Murfreesboro for 20 years. It's where he and his wife, Fatun, raised their two daughters, Lemma and Dima, and their son, Salim. Do you feel not welcome? No. To the contrary, actually, this is one of the most beautiful city in, in the United States. The people over here are extremely, extremely hospitable and nice. How do we control two seven-segment displays? Salah is an engineering professor at Middle Tennessee oh, oh, State University hard. in Murfreesboro. He was born in Syria. I'm, like, banking on lab to save my grade in that class. His daughters are students at MTSU. Here. Both were high school valedictorians. 
There were a few other Muslim students, but not very many at all. The Spinatis say they've always felt welcome in Murfreesboro, even after 9-11. Two days afterward, people who we did not know stopped us and say, please do, don't be afraid. We are the same. We are going to treat you in the same way. Professor Spinati arrived in Middle Tennessee in 1980. Only 10 Muslim families lived in Murfreesboro then. Their mosque was a small one-bedroom apartment. Today, there are 250 Muslim families living in Murfreesboro. The current mosque is often packed beyond capacity. There is really no place for us to pray or eat or do activities with the kids. People are usually praying on the sidewalk and in, in the parking lot. But they know it can be simple if we all do it together. Pushed by the center's imam, Osama Balul, the congregation pooled their money in 2009 to purchase a 15-acre parcel of land on the outskirts of town. It would be land for their new Islamic center. Where would you get the money from? We had a fundraising and we raised $320,000 to buy the land. In one fundraising? Yes. Here in Murfreesboro? Yes, here. When you first walked the land, describe that feeling for me. It's exactly like a homeless who has found the most beautiful home. And it's a long journey, a lot of pain to get there, a lot of effort. And then finally, you are about to sit down and say, wow, it feels good. Their vision was to build the new facility in stages. There'd be a school, a gym, a swimming pool, a cemetery, and a 10,000 square foot mosque. For the younger generation of Muslims in Murfreesboro, the plans represented progress. When you first heard about the new building being built, what was your reaction? We went from a one-bedroom apartment that was divided by a sheet to, you know, having this piece of 15-acre land. I hate to be cliche, but it was a dream come true. In November 2009, the congregation put up a sign announcing the future site of the Islamic Center. Then it was vandalized with a simple but disturbing message, not welcome. What did it feel like when that sign had not welcome? For someone who's lived here her whole life, pretty much. It had hard, you know, they, they had the words not welcome there, and that's, that's a very clear sign. We thought this is an individual act. The sign company said, we will make you a new sign for free. A second sign put up at the site was cut in half eight months later. A disturbing preview of the days and months ahead, as fear and suspicion would threaten to derail the mosque project and turn neighbor against neighbor. We're asking for those individuals who know who may have been responsible for this crime to come forward with that information.